Hey, welcome back. Uh, tonight we have a, another pretty basic model. Uh, we're going to start out with a simple block and start uh, removing the material. And we're going to use a full round filler command. We have not used that before. We're also going to use the hole wizard command to put this simple hole in here. Uh, this hole will be a simple extruded cut. Uh, dimensionally, it's going to be in inches, and we also are going to make our part out of an alloy steel. Um, we're looking at three inches overall. Uh, two inches on the width because we have a radius of one. This right here might get a little bit tricky. Um, a lot of times the uh, software will grab just a segment of it so it thinks it's a radius. So this we could change this back and forth between diameter and radius. I've uh, got a three quarter inch hole on the end of it and it's two inches overall on the height. So let's go ahead and get started. We want to make sure that we create our new part and we want to verify that we are in inches because we've been switching back and forth and we are. Look down on the bottom right hand side of it of your uh, modeling space and it should tell you. I want to come up and change my material before I forget. So the head of material. Now we steel is down along this area here. Um, most of the time the steel is defaulted as open. So I'm going to select it, apply and close. Um, like I said, we're going to start with a simple block. So extruded ball space. I want to select the front plane. It's going to orient normal to me. I want a center rectangle. I'm going to start on our origin. One mouse click, pull it out. Second mouse click, and now I need to dimension this. So we select smart dimension. It terminates our uh, command that we had. I'm going to place it down. It was three inches overall. So the program automatically scaled it for us. And the height of this was two. All right, so we're fully defined. I look down here at the bottom right. We are, so I can exit our sketch. Uh, this is one of these times where we could use the blind command, but I really want to use our mid-plane command because I want to use the, the reference geometry that the computer is going to give us, you know, the program is going to give us. Uh, this, pro this part was two inches wide, so we'll give it a depth of two inches and accept it. And now we have a block of material. Now remember, we're going to we're going to do this in baby steps. Uh, we're going to cut off this section. A lot of people get really worried about looking at these objects and going, there's a bunch of stuff in here that's kind of confusing. So we want to create an extruded cut. I'm going to select this face. Um, should orient normal to you. I want to use a corner rectangle. I want to come up and pick this top edge. Make sure it is coincident with the top edge. One mouse click, pull it out to the other edge and a second mouse click. Our dimensions on this was a half inch over and it's also one inch up from the bottom. So the smart dimension. I can't just pick this because it thinks it's the overall length of it. So this vertical line that we drew in our rectangle sketch and this vertical edge, pull it up, place it down at 0.5. And now from the bottom edge of our part to this bottom horizontal line of our rectangle, that was one. So we're now fully defined. I can tell that down in the right hand corner. Uh, click out of the paper space and your dimension should turn completely black. We want to exit our sketch. I'm going to rotate the model around and uh, this time I want to select through all. I don't want to have to think about it again if we change our width. So I accept it and control seven. So that puts us in an isometric with that control seven shortcut. Now look at our drawing and our next step is this little bit of material that's removed here. So it's a half inch up and it's also one inch from the left. So let's create an extruded cut again on this face. Should orient normal to you. So I'm going to use a simple rectangle. So I'm going to pick this top edge of our last cut and I'm going to pick this right vertical edge of our extrusion. So smart dimension from this vertical line to this vertical edge is one. And from this bottom edge to this bottom horizontal line, that was 0.5. So we are now fully defined and we are ready to make our cut. So we exit our sketch and we also want to make sure it is through all. So control seven for the shortcut to isometric. Now we have this arc that's on the top. This one here. What we haven't done in our lessons before is we want to use this fillet command. 
We've been putting simple fillets out here before. These are all sorts of different fillets that you can use, but this time we want to use this full round fillet. Now, notice it's got three selection boxes over here on the left hand side. You've got a blue, a purple, and a pink. You're going to have to manually pick which faces you want. Come back over, move your selection window down, pick it, and then move around and pick the next one. So, our first face set, I want to pick this. Notice how it's blue. I come force my selection window down a little bit and I want to pick this top edge and it turns purple. You kind of want to pick them in the order that you want to go. So lastly, this third face set is what I want to pick and that's going to be this back side. So I want to accept that. Now, you think that you could pick these as well. We don't want to do that. That's going to confuse us pretty much and it's probably going to give us an error. So we're going to accept that. Now, we want to do that one more time. So we select a fillet. We're already defaulted to full round fillet. My first face is this face. My next face, so I'll force it down. I'll pick this one, so blue, purple. Force it down, and we want to pick the third face, which should turn pink. Uh, what I may have failed to mention is we want to make sure that we've got full preview turned on to where we can see what's going on, and I'm happy with that, so I accept it. So control seven. We're looking at our model and we're getting a little bit closer. So let's go ahead and put this hole in here with the hole wizard command. So the diameter of that is going to be three quarters of an inch. So hole wizard is up in the top of your selection area of your features. So we're going to select hole wizard. I want to use a simple hole which is the top right one. I want to make sure that we're an ANSI inch. Fractional drill sizes. Um, drop this chevron down, selection window, and I want to be on three quarters of an inch. So we select it. You can show decimal values and other things. We can put a near side countersink and a far side countersink. We're not too concerned with that just yet. So these are the parameters that we want to work with on our feature. Uh, so the positions is where it's going to create a three dimensional sketch for us. So we come select positions. It's going to ask where we want to place it. You have to think about this like you're actually going to drill a hole in this particular face. So I want to put my drill motor and drill bit on this face. So I select it. And I'm going to use the Control A command to orient normal to me where I can see what's going on. Now, I know that it's centered up with this radius out here. What I'm going to do is just come tickle this edge. I am not. So I just tickle it. I don't click on it. Notice how my concentric symbol shows up on my center point. That's where I want to place that hole. So I'll place it. I'm going to use my escape key one time. And I want to look down here and it says that I'm fully defined. So I'm, I know that I'm centered up with where this arc is and the center of this drill bit's going to be. So I'm going to accept that. And we now have a hole. So we use the control 7 command. Now we're getting closer and closer to our final model, so we're going to put this hole in here. When we look at our drawing, this is where it gets a little bit confusing sometimes. So we have a R.5, and what happens is, even though this is a continuous circle, sometimes when you get ready to put your dimensions on here, it's going to pick this segment instead of the entire circle. So if it picks a segment, it thinks that it's a radius and not really a diameter. So this is a one inch radius, which is tangent to both of these lines, these vertical lines. So this really is a one inch radius, but this half inch radius is a one inch diameter circle. So we want to create a, an extruded cut. So I'm going to select extruded cut and I'm going to pick this face. I'm going to use my control A command. Yours may orient normal to you. I'm going to come select a circle. I want to make sure that it's a circle by center. I'm going to come tickle this outer edge. And notice my concentric symbol showed up. It's also on the point of origin. So I'm going to come place that right there. One mouse click, pull it out, second mouse click, and a smart dimension. So I want to dimension our circle. I'm going to place it down. Now I know that it's one. So we're going to head and accept that. Our sketch is fully defined. I want to exit our sketch. I want to rotate it around to where we can see what we're looking at. 
I don't ever want to think about it again, so I'm going to drop this chevron down. I'm going to select through all and then accept it. And we now have our model. So control 7 and make sure that you save it.